Hello and welcome to a Smurd P video and yes if you look at the thumbnail we have some great news in this issue and I'm very 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 happy because I've been oh in the background for many many issues wanting this to happen so um yeah so I <laughs> it, there was no way I wasn't doing that thumbnail at all so here we have X-Men issue 17 and on the front we have Firestar go and this is the Dalterman variant cover and I've been trying to get each issue with this cover although issue 18 I don't seem to be able to find one so I'm not sure if that's just skipped for one issue or what but it's back with bang with issue 19 so um since uh, wanted to stay away from the vault because well he in his mind he spent enough time wasted on the vault or on the vault, whatever you want to call it. He spent a hundred years in there. So can you blame him? So he's called by Gene. We need him. And he comes to run him. And then we have, we go straight into the design after that opening. And we have Jerry Dugan, who is doing the writing. Joshua Kassara on the art. Guru Effects on the colors. Feces Clay and Cows on the letters. Tom Miller and Jay Bowen on design. So the issue... Uh, is with Forge, and Forge has made a decision not to save Laura. Now, I'm just going to take it back a step, because on this page, it's hypothetically, if I asked you to trust me with everything that you are, would you do that? And you, with Forge, you don't know, it's not a, a black or white answer, is it? Because Forge, he can sometimes come out on the right side, you can sometimes go off and be a bit crazy and do some crazy stuff. So um, he's uh, he's uh, leaving Laura there, uh, much to uh, Caliban's dismay. But he says that's because um, he was assured that she was killed in action. And so that Sinch could escape. And our mission is Darwin and not there. And Caliban said he wants to, he wants to help her, you know. And then we get forged. This is when it really starts shifting, where he says, you don't really exist. Not really. You can't tell me what to do. And I bundled your mind and your DNA, and I wore them in, I built them into the suit sort of thing. And then he tries to put him to sleep. However, Caliban's not going without a fight. Um, and and he, he references that he doesn't want to be misused and basically forge you're doing the same thing that everybody else has done to caliban all this time so in essence it has caliban's personality as well which is which is great because um but forge tries to justify this by saying we have to save darwin that is the the future of the survival of their species perhaps um however he is stopped by the mutant uh sapphire Saf Serafina, so so yeah, sorry, that was terrible. I'm pretty sure I said that completely wrong. Anyway, moving on. So um, they they have a sort of conversation of why they're there. And Forge, uh, he tells him that it's a rescue mission. However, Forge wakes up and goes into war of mode, and um, she says, you know, she actually likes that. Uh, creature etc however she throws this off and takes a uh, forge out who has to use his life support to sort of survive and he's preparing to send out a beacon for their mission failure failure so safina wants uh, i'm just going to call her whatever i want to call her uh, wants to um some answers some real honest answers and she talks about why the x-men freed her as well and forge says well that's what the x-men do they do the right thing. And leaving you as a prisoner would have been wrong. And um, then she asked um, if uh, Forge constructed that trap. And he's open outside the vault. He said, yes. He's quite honest. And um, he says the alternative was war. And then she says, what were your other motives? He says, well, I wanted to see what, what will happen. And um, she believes this. And she says that um, 
the scales of balance you may go because I also want to see how this will end. So um, Forge perhaps found a sort of a kindred spirit. Uh, however, shortly after that, he is boop boop. And this is not, uh, you You automatically think it's her, her doing, but it's not. Um, it is somebody else's doing. So he is in a similar construct to the one outside the vault. And this is everything that he's wanted to create and see out there. However, it was, is Darwin's doing. Darwin comes to see Forge via this system. And um, they go off flying. It's all in their mind, etc. And um, he, Forge is trying to find out where his body is because he wants to free him. However, Darwin says he's been in there for centuries and it was a nightmare. And then pretty much they were doing experiments to see how I would um, survive and come out of it, etc. You know, over and over again. And, you know, it's it's... He, he says to himself in, in his mind, he says, I'm going to get out of this one. And then in the next instant, he has the answer. And um, the answer is he sort of becomes code in, in and it sort of starts traveling through these systems to find out about the children of the vault and what they do, etc. Um and um he's he's sort of created this um architectural link so to speak and um then he says ideas are hard to die and he's not finished he says i've done some good work but i'm not finished on finding out anything in here he's still learning and he's not ready and he's he's Without his shell, maybe he'd be better off in, in terms of being in here. But he says he's not prepared to to go out. And, you know, he says goodbye. And then so Forge wakes up. He was out for several minutes. And then um, he says um, he's going to do the right thing. So he creates this pod where he can um, get, get Laura out, etc. So... Because that's what the X-Men do. So maybe Forge is actually starting to think more like an X-Man rather than Forge, the cre you know, the, the fixer, the one who goes and fixes everything or creates everything. Do you know what I mean? So, which is great. So, since comes flying in, what's going on? Who's in trouble? Etc. And, um, and, and I already knew what happened. You know, sometimes it's hard. It's really hard with the internet. Um and social media to not see things and I try not to see things I really do especially when I want to read something and I want to talk about it etc but this moment even though I knew it it was going to happen it made me very happy just wait well, a minute it's not that it's not that moment just yet it's not a moment just yet it's just hi and Psychops try to say you know maybe Laura needs a little bit more time no she does not she she's missed her you know, since she's missed her so much, she's missed Everett, Everett and Laura back together, old woman, Laura, whatever you want to call her. So there are two Lauras existing now, um, just to make things interesting. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but um, yeah, that was a beautiful moment. That got me. Um, Jerry got me again, and there's a few times that Jerry's got me throughout. He's a uh, He's run so far. And once again, it's Jerry at his best. It's Jerry delivering um, a great story full of um, dilemmas and, you know, character growth. And it's it's really, really is good. So it's time to go home. Um, the Volter there, um, Forge decides to um, destroy that suit. And um, I think now he sees that he made a mistake by what he did by going to Sinister. I think he's starting to turn a corner in, in that. And, he, you know, he's going to tell Gino about it. But first, he is going to go see somebody. He comes to see Caliban. And um, he talks about, he talks hypothetically. Um, you know, if I asked you to trust me 
and to trust me. And this goes back to that first page, which is why I wanted to highlight it. With everything that you are, your powers and your mind, would you do that if I could help mutants in trouble? Caliban, you know, Caliban's innocent. He just seems like childlike. He just says yes. So, um, and this is a very, very important bit for Forge. Forge says, um, I'm going to tell you a tale. And then I owe you a, uh, a big, big apology to you. And the tale has a happy ending. It's about Wolverine and Cinch. But we know that this story is about what he did there and, you know. Hopefully he's going to make amends for that, which is which is great because that's real growth for Forge. I feel I feel Forge could have easily not gone and spoke to Caliban, but he does, and he's starting to feel, see things and feel more like the X Men. But just that beautiful, beautiful end thing. The you've heard the one about Cinch, Wolverine, and Darwin heading into the vault, right? It's a love story, man. It's a love story. And it may have started in Jonathan Hickman's book. And maybe Higman had a plan all along. I don't know. Maybe this is what he he, gave, he said to Jerry. I want you to pursue this. And, you know, pursue this how you want it. But it is a beautiful, beautiful love story. I never, you know, and a lot of stories in comics are not what they once were. We get a lot of, oh, he's with her and then he's with him and hers with her. And, you know, and it sort of jumps around quite a bit. But stuff like this feels special. You know, we haven't had a a special relationship in X Men. Um, I mean, you can say Jean and Scott if you want, um, but we haven't had one new, a new special relationship, and this feels really special. So, I hope that the riots don't bugger this up because I feel like this is this is a relationship that can last for another fifty years. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, there is. Another beautiful issue of X-Men. I'm very, very happy with this issue. I really enjoyed it. And um, I'm looking forward to, um, I think the annual's coming out next. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that. And um, if you like my channel, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, make sure you look after yourself. Very important these days. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. And as always, brace geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.